Hi, thanks for watching this video. Today I will talk about how you can start your cloud native journey for Windows workloads. My name is Xiaohu Gao, Product Marketing Manager at VMware CNABU. Before we go into the details, let's take a quick look at the current state of Windows. So Windows framework is heavily developed, uh, adapted by enterprise customers. According to a Docker survey in 2018, 80% of enterprise applications are based on Windows, and 70% uh, 70, 70 of those are running Windows 2008 and earlier. Uh, as many of you may know, 2008 is going end of life in 2020. In order to get Microsoft operating support, a lot of enterprises need to upgrade to a later version of Windows operating system. So this means that the application code may need to be refactored and to run on the new OS. Application refactoring can be hard. We certainly don't want to do it more than once if we can help it. And uh, lift and shift into container is one way to avoid constant refactoring. Luckily, Microsoft has been working since 2014, making running containers on Windows Server easy. Artifacts to build and generate document images are often integrated into a majority of the popular IDE, such as Visual Studio. Even better news, Kubernetes officially announced Windows support in 1.14 release. VMware, along with many companies in the Kubernetes community, worked hard to ensure Windows application can take advantage of the same goodness Kubernetes offers for Linux-based workloads. By running Windows under Kubernetes, you will get tons of operational efficiencies. Instead of maintaining different operational processes based on OS platform, now you can solidate. Application developer will love it too. Container simplifies packaging, and Kubernetes are built for multi-cloud. This means apps will only need to be developed once, and you can run it across many environments and across different clouds. For business leaders, Kubernetes can make your application run more efficiently at scale. You will no longer have machines running idle or constantly invest dollars to refactor apps to the latest OS. By running Kubernetes, you retain the benefit your applications bring to the business but decrease the overall cost of keeping it running. The journey towards cloud native for Windows is made up of two simple steps. Step one, take your existing application and containerize it. If you're using Visual Studio, Visual Studio can automatically generate the container Docker file for you. Once you build your Docker image, you can then wrap that container image into Kubernetes constructs and allow Kubernetes to schedule the workload, scale up or down based on the demand. In a two-part video series, we will first show you how to add a Windows worker node to an existing Kubernetes cluster running upstream Kubernetes 1.14 and Flannel Overlay Network Team. In part two of the video, we will take a older Windows app written with the older ver version of Windows, update the Docker file, build the Docker image, and uh, use Kubernetes to schedule this workload into the worker node we just added in the first part of the video. Let's get started with part one of the video, adding Kubernetes worker nodes to a Windows cluster. What I have here is a Windows 2019 image with quad CPU and eight gig of memory. Plenty of good documentation available both from Microsoft or Kubernetes community. At a high level, um, to get a Kubernetes cluster running, we'll manually install Docker test to make sure that Docker is working properly, and the download the Kubernetes binaries, set the environment variable, and uh, finally join the node into a working cluster. A quick note, if you are part of the Windows beta program, the installation will be performed by our installer. So this is a educational video for how things work under the cover. Let's start by install Docker. To avoid typing and help guide the video along, I will copy and paste the command from my notepad. 
But first, install the Docker Microsoft provider and all its dependencies. We will then install Docker from the Microsoft provider. A reboot is required after the Docker install. After the reboot, let's make sure that Docker is still running. And uh, then we're going to start testing the Docker um, operation by pulling a Docker image from the Microsoft registry. We will pull the Microsoft Nano server image, and um, it's the smallest image Microsoft makes available, around 100 meg in size, and there are a few other images as well. We're then going to tag the image, and this step is optional. We'll then use the docker run command to bring up a copy of a docker container using this image. If everything is working, um, then you'll get the prompt back. Next step is to create a Kubernetes directory on your C drive and to download the Windows binary from the Kubernetes download site. Prepare for this video, I pre-created a, a Kubernetes folder and uh, preloaded the Windows binary into the download folder. All I need to do is unzip the download into my newly created Kubernetes folder. My next step is to copy the required executables to the root of the newly created Kubernetes folder. And this is because later I will set the environment variable to point to this folder for all the required executables when I add the node to my existing master node. Let's now set the environment variable, uh, both the path and also the kubeconfig, pointing to the folder where we store the executables. My next step is to download the kubeconfig from my master node. Kubeconfig contains the certificates and credentials I need to join the cluster. And uh, we're almost done with prep work. Our last step is to download and customize a Windows startup PowerShell script, and uh, this script will be used to integrate our Windows node into the overall Kubernetes cluster from a networking perspective. And uh, with the PowerShell script, you would uh, specify the management IP, the type of overlay, the uh, cluster blocks, and uh, DNS info, and they would just go out and uh, configure uh, everything you will need to join the Kubernetes cluster uh, for you. Installer will open a number of windows to provide you an update of the status and uh, the entire install takes roughly under 10 minutes and uh, well, once the installation is complete you'll get the prompt back and you can use the kubectl commands to retrieve the information about your node and to get in detail information about um, the, the worker node uh, how it belongs to the cluster. At the moment, um, I don't have anything deployed in my cluster. And uh, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to take a legacy Windows app and then use Kubernetes to deploy and manage your application. And thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon.